Hello and welcome to this Total War Rome 2 Desert Kingdoms Let's Play. My name is Wheels and today we're going to be playing as the Kingdom of Nabatea, one of the four new factions available in this Rome 2 culture pack. The Nabateans were great builders and pioneers of advanced construction techniques. They were the first civilization to use cement extensively and built remarkable watertight reservoirs ensuring a plentiful supply of portable water. Even under threat from powerful foes like the Seleucids and Judeans, their progressive society enabled them to flourish and prosper. With their knowledge of stone cutting, the Nabateans will enjoy faster and cheaper construction of main settlement chain buildings. And, due to their history in trading incense, they will also gain a bonus to any income incense brings them. It's not just incense that will earn your faction a bounty of gold though. The Nabateans are adept traders, and as you can see from the wealth of ships leaving my port, as well as the camels on land, I've made sure to capitalise on that. In our home province of Nabatea, the Sharmufa settlement has early access to spices and a dock with which to trade from. By looking at the diplomacy screen, we can see that I've managed to secure a trade deal with almost everyone in reach, aside from those at war with me. It seems he who controls the spice controls Arabia. Speaking of which, it's time to look at our main antagonist of the campaign so far. The Seleucid Empire have been a thorn in my side from the start, declaring war on my people from the very first turn. With their own territory and the lands of their satrapies, Media, Persia and Sardes, the Seleucids have our noble kingdom surrounded and war is the only option. Our first move then is a defensive one, as our enemy from the east, Media, has sent a full stack of soldiers towards our main trading port. We can't allow our main source of income to fall, and as such, I've had to spend a lot of cash taking into mercenary soldiers. These Arabian cavalrymen will be essential to the battle ahead, as Media seem to have brought a skirmisher-heavy army into our lands. It's going to be a tough fight for sure, but I think our superior number of melee infantry and cavalry will surely win us the day. Well, our superior tactics have brought us victory over the invaders from the east, and they'll be running back to Medio with their tails between their legs. With our southern territory saved, it's time to keep an eye on our northern border with those aggressive Seleucids. We've managed to grab Palmyra and Tyros already, providing us with more trade resources in their ample supply of glass. Let's convert these buildings to our culture in Tyros. Our second military force is currently closing in on what remains of a Seleucid army that has recently taken over Jerusalem from our Egyptian allies. They're out of movement points though, so let's end the turn and commence our assault next season. Turn two now and our military research has finished, meaning we can look at some of the other technologies that we have available to us. Let's look at our options on the tech tree then. I've unlocked the first of the military train, which will give us access to improved infantry and cavalry if we decide to pursue it. The Nabateans were just one of the many kingdoms and tribes that were influenced by the Greek way of life. And following this chain of military advancements, we'll see our armies adopt some of those Hellenic practices into our armies, with hoplites and slingers. But this empire I'm building is one of commerce, and military advancements are going to have to take a back seat. I'm going to research trade language to further improve the gold I'm going to receive from my trade partners. Let's get rid of those mercenaries to free up some income and replace them with our own soldiers. That's almost doubled our profits for this turn, and that media force will be licking its wounds for quite a while. And now we can expand our borders and finally have control over the entire province of Nabatea. Not only will this allow us to issue edicts here, Jerusalem also has access to yet another trading resource for my burgeoning mercantile empire. Let's fix up the buildings that got damaged in the siege and get that olive grove back into production. I've got a few friends up north who just love a bit of oil. Let's issue that edict as well. I think it's time for a little commercial stimulation. 
Over the next few turns, I'm going to have to be careful, because the Seleucids are amassing quite the force in their capital of Antioch. I'm going to send my spy, Amdan, up north to attempt to halt their advances, should the worst happen. Into turn three, and we've completed the first of our campaign objectives, and the next step in the grand plan is to seriously raise our military standing in the world. It's a well-timed objective, because just as we thought we were doing well, in come the Seleucids to spoil our day. That's a whole lot of army making its way to a very undefended town, which means we're going to have to act quickly to see off these invaders. On top of that, as if it wasn't bad enough, there's also a full stack sailing in our contested waters and a small navy headed for our port as well. Right, desperate times call for desperate measures. Good thing we at least have some allies to call on. Let's hope that the other members of the Down with the Seleucids party can assist in taking on some of these armies and fleets. It would be beneficial for my Mayin friends to take Adamantu as well, giving us a buffer between Media and our more important settlements. We're going to need to pull out every stop to halt this invasion, and with the serious load of cash that completing our objective got us, we might as well take every opportunity we can. Let's try and weaken this main force a little with some subterfuge. Ah, uh, crap. That's not how I wanted that to go. Looks like money can't buy you everything. Well, time to see how much of a military force we can muster. First, let's move our main army north to Tyros. I'm going to have to put him into force march to get there, which is a bit of a risk, but he's useless where he is right now. We need an army to defend Palmyra, and we need it fast. Let's raise a new force. This guy looks like a good choice. I'm going to load him up with the Rakem Palace Guard, a really heavy spear unit that can hold the line fantastically well. Wow, that is a ragtag band of misfits I've got at my disposal. But two units of armoured elephants is a welcome sight for sure. It's going to cost us a massive amount of cash to hire all these mercenaries, and our income will definitely be in the negative for this turn, but I can see quite a lot of these men dying in a battle with the Seleucids. We can only hope that there's enough of them to hold off the hordes. Looks like those big bad Seleucids got a little scared when they saw the armoured war elephants defending their destination. They decided to attack Tyros instead, and they've been given a rude awakening. This was an important victory for Nabatea, as we've even managed to deal a bit of hurt to their reinforcing navy as well. Let's finish off what's left of the army that they moved into our territory. Looks like the fires of Hephaestus have been well and truly doused. To the victor goes the spoils. I'll just level up these generals quickly. I think they've earned it after their tireless defence of the Nabataean borders. Oh dear. Looks like our Cypriot trade partners got the short end of the stick in this conflict. We'll have to send some ships out into the open waters in search of a replacement. It's a good thing we kept Tyros safe, because her harbour will act as a vessel for the many new trade partners I plan to gain over the coming years. This fleet will be useful for exploring new territories, and I'll upgrade my port into a full-blown market harbour as well. Now back to the front. We need to set up plans to completely oust these Seleucids from our lands. I'll disband some of these mercenaries to free up some cash, but you know I'm going to keep those war elephants. Our king is still hurting from the defence of Tyros, so I'll consolidate his forces and move most of them into our new army so that we can start marching north next turn. I want to keep an eye on the east just in case the Seleucids get any ideas. So let's move our spy over to Jura to do some scouting. Ah, good. It's undefended. For now, at least. 
We'll end our turn there and start moving our forces to Antioch in the autumn. Oh, what a surprise. The Seleucids want a peace treaty. Well, it looks like they took quite a few losses in that last conflict. And they are treacherous in diplomacy. I think I'm going to say no. Finish them off whilst I still can. Autumn is upon us, and the Seleucid capital of Antioch lies almost completely undefended, which makes the ultimate time to strike. Our new general has good opportunity now to prove himself on the battlefield and an excuse to break out those armoured war elephants. Fast forward a turn and we're ready to assault. The Seleucids have moved in to protect their capital with the closest force they have, but that's nothing against the forces of Nabatea.